so we're going to start with an overview of how mousetrap ignitions work. This is inert. So there's a pin which is pulled. Then there's a spoon here and then there's a mousetrap spring which you can see it propels the spoon upward as the spring force snaps it down. The spoon pivots on this fulcrum and then flies off. Anyway, so this this comes down and this little nipple here hits a primer cap which ignites a gasless fuse in, internally. I'm going to demonstrate on a different type of mousetrap spring. A literal mousetrap. So if we take a piece of cardboard say we have this in here and this is our mousetrap igniter right <clears throat> first I'm gonna drill this out okay this is a 15 64th inch <laughs> bit so we're just gonna drill one small hole through the entire length of this fuse right So now this is a quarter inch, right? We're going to drill down only as far as we need to to hit the bottom of this copper cap. That's probably, it's probably a good idea to put a piece of painter's tape there or something to mark it, but this should sit beautifully. Just That screws in. The idea, if the cup is supposed to sit flush in this tube, okay, and here's how the spring ignition works. Boop. Okay. Okay, so here is how to make this time fuse, which is the most important part of all of this. This is quarter inch time fuse from skylighter.com this is quarter inch time fuse from pyrochemsource.com you can see that these are different thicknesses this is probably closer to a true quarter inch and then also the powder core in the center is also much different this one's much smaller so I personally prefer the smaller one although when it tra when the time fuse transitions to a secondary fuse it does that secondary fuse will require a primer for reliability this one is so thick that it can just light damn near anything if you're using a thicker you know you're going to obviously have to vary your drilling pattern to accommodate or your drilling diameters to accommodate whatever fuse you're using but i'm going to show you with this 5 16th inch crimp ring copper crimp ring from the Home Depot coaxial cable department near electrical supplies. Here's what I've found to be the best way to do this fuse. This is time fuse, right? I'm going to cut this at a diagonal. Now this is failure prone, okay? This whole setup, so like, don't assume that this transfers over to anything, you know, other types of pyrotechnic devices, and don't assume that it's a safe setup. These are smoke devices. They are inherently less dangerous. You know what I mean? Like if your fuse prematurely jumps the ignition you're not gonna blow up and die you know so keep that in mind okay so i cut this diagonally and then i cut the tip off of this a little bit the the reason for the diagonal cut on this time fuse is twofold one is so that it 
has a greater cross section for this powder uh, core to ignite. And two is that it takes up some of the space of this copper cap, which would normally be taken up by the ignition composition. I found that I was adding way too much ignition composition and was getting my, yeah, the whole, here are some, here are a couple of examples of what happened to me. So what I do now is I'm cutting, I'm, I'm chamfering this down quite a ways. We're gonna really try to slide this copper ring pretty far down this diagonally cut fuse here. All right, my handy dandy CA glue that I always love so much. I can't tell you how many fails this was. That's why it took so long to release another video. I like went and like got all set up multiple times and it was a fail like three times maybe no four actually all right so there's that <sighs> okay the chemicals that go in here i'm using one of my pull string igniter kits that i sell at inventionincarnate.com um here's a Here's an inside view of what's in them. But. It's only. So. I'll say that this is a striker. Alright, let me just organize this. I'm not doing a good job of making this look attractive. Big ass needle. This is the ignition composition, or half of it. This is the other half of the ignition composition. These are the igniter cups. This is a bottle of PVA glue, a dental syringe, striker composition. We'll need this, and eh, we'll need it soon. Um, a whole bunch of, of satin cord for the pull string igniters, and a bunch of sticks and stuff. Well, I actually need this, too, this brush, no stirs. So I'm going to just quickly show you for full transparency. This is a chart of all the chemicals that are in this first mix I'm making. So I separate the oxidizer from the rest of the components in this mixture so that it is non hazmat shipping and it is not even remotely reactive until you mix it and use it. Potassium chlorate is the oxidizer in here and it is very hygroscopic. So it cakes. So I like to crush it up like that and then just kind of shake it. So now we have this dry mix. So once we have this dry mix, we can either add PVA glue, or in this case, I am taking some of this dry powder out. Oh, I don't need that much. And adding nitrocellulose lacquer is right here. So something to note is that I double, so there's 14 grams total in here the you only need about five grams to make 50 pull string igniters I intentionally more than double this ignition composition so it can be used for other igniters and also things like priming fuses priming secondary fuses and stuff or priming giving you a primer to use to ignite um, a smoke composition or whatever um, I love this stuff. Anyway, so we're going to take some of this and some nitrocellulose lacquer. Let's 
stuff evaporates so quick it doesn't even matter how much you put in and this is a reusable silicone mixing cup oh and there's my fun instructions as well these are this is an example of some of the types of igniters you can make with this kit it's basically it gives you you is the more the, all right so what i'm doing here is i'm packing this and pushing it down to so that it's adjacent to this powder core of this time fuse and that is also wedging the time fuse over a bit We're going to leave a little bit of a divot here. Nitrocellulose lacquer dries super fast because it's all acetone. Ooh, and now we will flip this little silicone cup inside out. Take some striker composition. We only need like this much of that stuff, just enough to coat the top. That's it. And we just clean this up because it's a really tight fit inside the fuse. That's fuse with a Z. All right, so now we'll slide this through the fuse and then I'll show you how to cross match this. But that's how you do it. <laughs> okay, so this is not going to go any deeper because it's cardboard and, and freaking super glue. But you get the idea. It, the cup is supposed to sit flush in this tube, okay? And here's how the spring ignition works. Boop! Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to transition from the time fuse to this fast burning visco fuse down to the core of this smoke composition, which is crazy. It's an epoxy based composition. So this is solid. It's the whole thing is waterproof and it has an infinite, oh, a very, very long shelf life because it's all encapsulated in an epoxy resin. So, first thing we're going to do, I guess, is show you the mix on how to make this composition here.
Uh, I would say this is not a how-to video on this smoke mix, okay? Because, oh, and this is a Tiki Torch can, by the way, all right? So, uh, one of these from Walmart, literally. Tiki Torch can. Um, oh, man, this glove is annoying me. But, so, this composition is uh, uh, based on hexachloroethane. Um, one of the byproducts is zinc chloride and that has been found to cause cancer so honestly I'm pretty sure I'm coming up with a better composition than this one using terephilic, uh, terephilic acid but essentially a terephilic acid based composition that is that uses epoxy as a vehicle so all the, you have all the same benefits of this kind of device but I would n certainly not advise using this it is kind of toxic but this is what they're trying to phase out of the military. They do have a lot of the HC smoke mix in their, in storage. However, for training, the military has transitioned to terephilic acid-based smoke devices. Um, to my knowledge, I might be wrong. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But So here's how to make this stuff. Let's stick through this one because it's, it's, it's rough. But I tried to make it quick. Okay, so I'm going to go through all these chemicals. First, I'm just going to say the percent by mass, the percent composition, okay? What I did is I took the percent composition and I multiplied it by 10 to obviously make a larger batch. We have ammonium perchlorate, 31%. Zinc oxide, 18%. Hexachloroethane, 13%. Ammonium chloride, 11%. Sodium bicarbonate, 4%. Sulfur, 2%. Ferric oxide, 1% is this stuff I'm going to try to do this quickly ammonium perchlorate is the oxidizer zinc oxide is a smoke colorant it's dispersed like a very you know a very fine white powder hexachloroethane is a smoke generator ammonium chloride smoke generator sodium bicarbonate a buffer it's actually used to aerate the whole mix which is really interesting so the it's an optional component, but I'll get back to sodium bicarbonate in a second. Sulfur, which is a fuel, and ferric oxide, which is a catalyst. So the sodium bicarbonate aerates the final composite product, so it fluffs it up. That increases surface area when it, while it's burning, which subsequently makes, makes it dump smoke even faster. Now, I wish everything was as easy as this, just having things magically prepared. Um, so DER331. No idea what that is. 30 grams. 2 ethyl hexyl acrylate. 50 grams. Oh, this is the epoxy. This is the epoxy resin or the curing agent. This is the curing accelerator. Versamid 140, 20 grams. 2%, 5%, 3%. 3%. P-band polymer, 10%. And that means 100 grams here. So I'm going to mix them in a cup. So anytime you're mixing epoxies, this is a good legitimate tip. Um, you want to switch containers at least once and switch stir sticks when you switch containers. You want a flat bottom on your stir stick. You do not want a round bottom. So I am just squirting all this crap in here. All right, I'm going to transfer this over to this one. Also, it's almost impossible to, it is impossible to get all the epoxy off the edges of a container. So inevitably, if you use only one container for mixing, you'll have soft spots in your epoxy. I'm going to go ahead and say that using my hands was a bad idea. I should have just stirred this with a stir stick like a normal person. Also, you'll see me rolling this up into a ball and then loading it into a tiki torch canister. After that, I place a Delrin rod, which is one inch in diameter, into the center of the composition so that as it cures, it will, it'll harden with a hollow center.
So that mixture has to cure for nine hours between 140 and 160 degrees. Okay, so now the next thing we have to do is basically put a primer in and then um, one component of the fuse. This primer composition, 70% potassium perchlorate, 20% magnalium, 10% red gum. Interestingly, the red gum is used as a fuel in this mix instead of a binder. The binder is nitrocellulose lacquer. Here's how this burns. I'm going to move away the flammables. So you, that's how that burns. Very hot, very bright. It does a very effective job of igniting stuff. So moving on, what we're gonna do is just take this guy, take this guy, and some nitrocellulose lacquer here. This is a reusable silicone cup. I'm just gonna scoop this in here. Scoop some of it. Nitrocellulose lacquer. This started as 25% nitrocellulose lacquer in acetone. It, uh, I add, I add more acetone to reconstitute it, and then it just dries out. You know, eventually. I did this way too soon. Then we're gonna take some of this fuse. This is fast burning visco. We're gonna make a loop. We're gonna measure the side of the can. Secure it here. Cut that. I believe that tying an overhand knot, a, you know, an overhand on a bite, is too much. So I'm just going to tie too much fuse material. I think that that will be a flaming, a flare up waiting to happen. So I'm just tying a constrictor hitch here to secure these two ends of the fuse and also to provide a slight little barb, I guess you could say, for this to be held in by the ignition composition. We'll leave a little bit of tail on this to anchor it in. And then, I'm gonna get this wetter. It doesn't help to have a fan blowing on it. <laughs> I'm like, why is this evaporating so fast? Okay. So, we're going to take this, cut this. Ooh, no, you don't, mister. Cut that there. And scoop some of this NC lacquer primer stuff into this. This is a lot. Um, we do not need to use all of this, but I just want it to be protected from evaporation, drying out too much. Um, one thing I am going to do is also prime this, the apex here of this loop. I'm just gonna smear some of this on there. It, it, you'll see why in a little bit. All right. So this is in here. So acetone does eat through plastic. So you gotta kinda be quick about it. So now we're putting this down into the core. Well first I'll make a little bed of this ignition composition. Or the primer, sorry.
then, I don't know what you can see in here. Alright, so it's in a little blob on the bottom there. Then, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this GUI up, going up here. Shoot, I forgot to treat the fuse with nitrocellulose lacquer. So you can dip this literally in this big thing of nitrocellulose lacquer if you want it to be waterproofed internally. So the good thing about these epoxy formulas, epoxy based formulas, is that the longevity, durability, moisture resistance, I mean waterproofness, um, if this fuse was dipped in nitrocellulose lacquer, this whole thing could be submerged once it was completed. You'll see, you'll see how I waterproof the other components. There, so uh, we're going to let this dry, and then by the time it is dry, it'll be glued pretty firmly into the bottom of this composition. And this loop here will integrate it into the time fuse and, you know, to create a delay. Okay, so this is that cardboard tube, quick welded with uh, JB Quick Weld steel stick into the Tiki Torch lid. I painted that cardboard black. And so how this works is we take this thing we just made, lubricate this with graphite. So if the fuse is sticking, you want it to be very tight, but you want it to be very tight so that there's no uh, ignition gases that are sneaking through. But um, I could get this to cover it up. Well, that's beautiful. See how that sits there? That's beautiful. Okay, so now. To trim now, oh, by the way, we can trim this stuff off. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just thought of something funny. All right, so the the lid is cut off of this, right? It doesn't matter if this is shallow. The threading, if the threading is like shorter on this end, the purpose of this cap is to actually pop off of this device, right? So what 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 we do is we I coat it with dielectric grease, which is bulb grease, and the threads, right? So that that waterproofs it. Um, the threading it, it'll waterproof the threading on this cap right and and then it um, when it's activated it ignites a time fuse the time fuse ignites this secondary fuse the secondary this is fast burning visco it zips down there it, uh, it ignites another ignition uh, primer composition and then that lights the this epoxy this hard epoxy smoke composition from below and it burns up and and the gas builds up and it just pops this lid off it's really not violent or scary it just but the dielectric grease helps it to just pop off these threadings because these threadings are not very you see they're like they're like I mean they're tiki torch candles they're like they're not meant for like hardcore stuff but so I'm gonna slice this down the middle this time fuse very carefully, obviously. 
we're not going that far we're going I would say approximately what is this almost a half inch about a half inch so we just want to have that powder core exposed okay and we're gonna hook this and I'm gonna go a little bit more for funsies you gotta use a very sharp blade sharp blades are safe blades it's, it's counterintuitive yeah this is perfect so we're gonna first I'm gonna get the constrictor hitch ready right so that goes like this it's a clove hitch with an additional overhand knot and my favorite all right so this is a constrictor hitch that's ready to go yo I'm about to pop off <laughs> This is not very graceful, I'll tell you that right now. So now we slide this constrictor hitch over the end of these two tails here on this time fuse. Tighten that down. Oh look, it's a heart. <laughs> Alright, so that is tight, that is not going anywhere. And now this is connected and ready to go. We can just kind of push the time views down. And we put dielectric grease on the threads to waterproof it and to assist in its popping off. And there you go. Now we're going to test it out.